What's up all you Chainsaw Maniacs out there? Fat Samurai Guy here with Lady Fat Blood. Today we're going to review the film Split. This is going to be a spoiler discussion, so if you have not seen Split, what are you doing? Go out there and go see the movie, damn it! And then come right back. Mr. Shyamalan. Yeah. Welcome back. Hey, I missed you, buddy. I, I, I enjoyed your first two films. Hey, what can I say, man? You know, some people, some people, they just, they, 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 they have to try new things. And, um, Less so, is more with him. Some things work and some things... Are, yeah. yeah, he's kind of like got that Rob Zombie thing going on where you know you give him just a shoestring budget and a, a small little plot and he might give you something interesting. But you give him too much budget and holy shit, the whole world <laughs> explodes and it just goes too far and everybody hates it. Um, okay, so um, I'll, I'll just jump right in. When we first saw the trailer for Split... You were laughing. I was feeling very sorry for Mr. James McAvoy. Yeah. I am a very big fan of this particular actor. I find he is one of those very understated, slightly underrated actors... Oh, yeah. ...that um, he is always solid in everything that I've seen him in, and I enjoy watching him. I loved his take on Charles Xavier. Uh, I really enjoyed him in Wanted. Everything I saw from his performances in the in the trailer that we watched I, it seemed like he was probably doing what he was supposed to but the concept yeah. seemed very odd and in the hands of M. Night I was a little nervous for the yeah. film and when I saw we the were chuckling uh, a little bit watching the, the trailer the beginning of the trailer in particular featured some of that stilted dialogue that Shyamalan films are sometimes known for where you get the the girl excuse me sir I think you're in the wrong car what what yeah. teenage female no, no He's teenagers talk, talk like, like that. that. <laughs> Especially when you, you, some strange guy is sitting yeah. in the car. No one's going to talk like that. And that was like an indication of, oh, God, what are we in for? So we stayed away from most of the reviews. Mm -hmm. I think I had heard one early review that seemed promising. Yeah. Um, but I was still went in very blank slate with this. Didn't mm -hmm. watch any other trailers, just the first trailer that came out. And... Oh my God! I I already have. This is one of my favorite movies that I've that I've seen yeah. um, so far. I know this year just got underway, mm -hmm. but I I really mm -hmm. and I, I don't mean to oversell this. No, I really love this movie. Yeah, I mean it. It really really took us by surprise. Now this is a slow burn thriller. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is not a nonstop chase murder slasher you know film chasing females and stuff like that this is not a non-stop action movie this is a very slow burn uh character driven type of film and some people might find the ending a little anticlimactic yeah um, but this movie reminded me a great deal of 10 cloverfield lane mm -hmm. where i went in not knowing a whole lot about it we saw the first trailer and it was very intriguing although i wasn't very intrigued with the trailer for split i was still willing to give it a shot but it had that same feeling of what the fuck is going on? Mm -hmm. And that's something that I personally don't really get to experience in movies a whole lot. Movies these days, as much as I love cinema in general, um, I can enjoy the generic paint-by-numbers movies as much as I can enjoy something that's complex, but I don't get a lot of complex films, and you mostly end up getting just paint-by-the-numbers, and that's why you kind of have to just settle sometimes. We just did the review for Triple X, and if you listen to us there, you hear us say, hey, you know what, it's crap, but it's entertaining crap. That was not the case with this movie. Yeah. Um, for the most part, the characters, um, the main two characters, we're yeah. not we're not really going to go into the other two sub characters. They were just there. Yeah. Their their acting wasn't really the, that great either. But then you know their characters, they were not meant to be very That's well true. defined. That's true. Um, you get the the two main characters. What's what's the actress's Anya. name? Anya. Anya. Okay, um, she's an up-and-coming actress. So oh, you yeah. saw her in The Witch, mm -hmm. um, and it's it basically it's only about her and James McAvoy's character. Now McAvoy plays this character with multiple personalities, and as is in Shyamalan tradition, this is not based on somebody with real life split personality. Uh, there's there's a proper name for it. I'm not going to get into it. This is a fantasy-based version on a character that has multiple personalities. In other words this particular character for every personality that he has they know about each other in the the main brain and they take turns stepping into the light as they call it and each character has their own trait that can change 
the physical aspect of the actual human body, there's one character is a female mm -hmm. and she has diabetes and she has to take insulin. Well, none of the other characters need insulin to survive. And they set up that um, this every personality can change the body uh, to suit whatever is wrong with their particular personality. And the big thing is coming, the beast is coming, the, the 24th personality. And as as much as you have to turn your brain off in a lot of areas, because it is a fantasy. I yeah. see this as a horror kind of fantasy, because things happen in this yeah. movie that are kind of like... I don't think Shyamalan is, is, is saying this is real science. No, <laughs> absolutely not. This no. is not supposed to be taken as verbatim. This is what people with split personalities are like and what they have to deal with. But what I found really fascinating that I really enjoyed were the, the layers that both of the main characters had. The, the girl, Anya, her character keep, kept having these flashbacks and between the three girls that McAvoy had to, uh, had kidnapped, she was the one that was the most calm. And I mm -hmm. thought it was very strange how when McAvoy sits down in the car when he goes to abduct the three, she didn't freak out like crazy. She didn't start screaming. She didn't start crying. He sprayed the other two girls mm -hmm. down yeah. before... Uh, they could get out, but he didn't spray her automatically. Mm -hmm. And she's just kind of sitting there, and it wasn't until she kind of tried to get out that uh, he sprayed her to mm -hmm. knock her out. And I thought it was strange that she just sat there for several seconds and didn't yeah. do anything. Well, come to find out, this girl is a victim of some shit. And she has all of these different coping mechanisms. And I thought it was very interesting how these two characters with these very traumatic pasts kind of end up recognizing this trauma within themselves and which led to the ending her her whole story arc is that you find out that her uncle has been sexually abusing her for years and he is now her guardian and it was very fascinating that her character you never really get a resolution with that yeah she ends up surviving the whole ordeal and she's in the back seat of the cop car and you kind of get this feeling that you, I mean, as a regular casual audience member, you're like, why did you tell the police? You wanted to, you wanted to spill the beans and, oh, we're going to get to see the uncle arrested and da 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 and she's going to have a happy ending. No, we don't get any of that. But you do get this very, very subtle sense mm -hmm. that she's not going to put up with this shit no. anymore. But I love the look on her face yeah. that, you know, you, you don't know if she's going to say something, but I think a lot of people will take away from it that, yeah, she's going to say something. And it's like, it's so subtle mm -hmm. and it's so refreshing to they see left the something. camera on her for a while too yeah and so um, really good performance by anya she's yeah. really she's really man like watch out for this girl yeah. man watch out for her she was also starring in the film morgan which i heard was shit but mm -hmm. again she was great yeah. <laughs> so yeah keep yeah. your eye on her but but come on we all know it's all about James oh. McAvoy steals the show with his performance in this film. And again, I've heard I've heard some people complain that he's got 23 different personalities and you only get to focus on maybe five. So what? Yeah. They were all fascinating uh, mm -hmm. characters and his portrayal. I've never really I don't convincing. Know. There was something. <laughs> there's something about his performance in this movie with the way his eyes would just subtly change and his mannerisms would change and you could see there was this one character that kind of positioned himself as the protector of the rest of the characters within the body the dennis and yeah and mm -hmm. and he was pretending to be another character as he was talking with the therapist that they had this relationship with and the dennis character it's basically <laughs> It's James McAvoy playing the dude that's playing a dude that's playing another dude. <laughs> okay? And I don't know, this this performance, I just, you know, it's so sad that this movie's probably just going to come and go. He deserves recognition for this. Yes. Absolutely. Finally. I, I don't know if he ever will. I don't know if, you know, Oscars are too far away for next year. And this movie technically came out last year, but a lot of us, we didn't get it until January of this year. So, yes, not only was the film a surprise to us because... It was actually good, <laughs> but mind blown, mind blown a little bit later towards the end of the movie, mind blown, go. Okay, so Shyamalan films are known for having the twist. The twist. There is a joke about it. What a twist, okay. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, I'm enjoying this movie so much. Something is going to happen. 
something is going to happen by the end of this film that's going to piss me off, it's going to ruin the experience. At this point I had come too far to concede hatred for the film should yeah. the ending suck, but it was at least going to diminish my inter my enjoyment of the film. And I'm like, okay, well, so the ending come the ending comes and goes and he turns into the beast and he lets on you go. And I'm thinking, okay, well, some people might see that as a little anticlimactic because he doesn't die. He kills two girls. Oh no, he kills the two girls and he kills the therapist. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't pay for it. And so I'm thinking, okay, well that that ending was a little strange. And then the movie keeps going. <laughs> and suddenly we find out that we've just seen a prequel sequel to Unbreakable. Yeah. Yeah. Mind blown. What? You get a cafe sequence, everybody's watching the television. And you hear on the news they talk about they they end up naming McAvoy's character. They call him the Horde. And the camera slowly starts zooming forward. Uh, passing by people that are sitting there drinking their coffee and watching the TV at the diner. And <laughs> you hear this lady say, <laughs> wasn't there some crazy guy back in the day who was in a wheelchair? <laughs> and and then we were all like, at first we were just like... Our ears perked up. Yeah, we were like... Because we were like, what? Yeah. What? And then, and then it keeps going and then you see Bruce Willis. Fucking Bruce Willis on the end there. And he goes, yeah. His name is Mr. Glass. We freaked out in the theater. Mind blown. We not not once. Uh, not once did we expect anything like no, this. And anything like this. And the funny thing, here's the hilarious thing is, everybody in the theater were looking at us like we were insane. <laughs> people in front were turning around going, what the hell is wrong with these people? What are they freaking out about? We were like, oh shit, it's unbreakable. Holy shit. Now, explain, uh, give a quick, brief uh, Unbreakable uh, recap. Well, uh, Unbreakable was... there's people out there that don't know about Unbreakable. Unbreakable was basically Shyamalan's version of a superhero film. Mm -hmm. And this was way before the TV shows like Heroes came mm -hmm. out. This was like way before all that. It's basically people with abilities, but there's nothing really inherently good about their lives. I mean, Bruce Willis... He tries to save people, but yeah. it doesn't like always go. It's been years it's, since I've seen it. It's this. a realistic, more grounded uh, take on uh, the superheroes and supervillains. Yeah. He's involved in a train accident, and he's everybody dies on the train except him. And he finds out that he's unbreakable. He starts realizing that you know he's getting stronger and stuff like that, and and he kind of takes on a more of a not a superhero type of, type of role, but he does try to help people uh, at the end of the film. But the Samuel L. Jackson character, Mr. Glass, was very interesting because he was a big, huge comic book fan, superhero fan. But what you find out towards the end of the movie is that he's actually the villain. He's the one actually setting all this up to kind of draw out uh, Bruce Willis and draw out people like him. Because every hero needs a superhero. Yeah, and it ended great. Very it was a great interesting ending. concept. Very underrated. Yeah. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan film. Mm. I think now it's getting a lot more recognition, which it deserves. Mm. But when it came out, it was so ahead of its time that people were just like, what is this? Mm. Everybody loved The Sixth Sense and stuff like that. So when they saw Unbreakable, they were like, what the fuck? What, what the fuck did we just watch? Yeah. Not really considering or noticing the fact that it was actually a superhero movie. So this... Yeah. Fucking, are we gonna get? Are we gonna get Bruce Willis's character versus the Horde? Yeah. James McAvoy's character is Samuel Jackson gonna come back? There are talks right now that he wants to do another Unbreak Unbreakable Two. Yeah. And, oh man, and have his little trilogy. Yeah. Mind blown. I'm never one to overhype a movie because I, I truly believe that extreme hype can hurt a film, and. I, I never am the one to say, oh my god, you have to go see this, because, you know, at the end of the day, people, when you go into a movie with preconceived notions on something, it's never going to meet your expectations, and that can really hurt one's experience watching a movie. And again, it's something to be said for, for going into to Split, knowing very little about it. And to, to be able to go in and see something and be so surprised by it, um, and I hope we didn't ruin anybody's surprise. We warned you! It's a spoiler review! I'm sorry! Um, but to be able to go in and see something like this and be so surprised and to have it be this prequel to this new possible supervillain in a movie that basically kind of semi-sequeled a, a, a movie that's so old that I didn't really think anybody would ever give a shit about it anymore. It was, it was almost like, dude, 
this is the stuff that we love about cinema, what it can do, how it can kind of bring things back around. And they didn't do it in a ham-fisted way. This was not a deliberate world building that no. so many superhero films do mistakenly now is that you put the cart before the horse and you you miss the forest for the trees and all of those analogies where you got to focus on the story first and then find out if people want to see more. And, and most movies, they're so concerned about breaking in the money and just making as many things as they can. This movie gave us a story. It gave us really interesting characters, a really interesting premise. And this is going to be a first day Blu-ray purchase for me when this comes out. So again, we highly recommend you guys check this film out. And we give Split 4.8 out of 5 chainsaws. All right, that's it for today's video. If you have seen Split, let us know what you guys thought about it in the comments below. I'd like to thank all you guys for watching. You guys rock. We'll see you next time. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Man, this movie sucked. This movie was terrible. You know, I, I had heard... Money some, back, please! I heard some people God. saw the, the visit and yeah. they thought, hey, Shyamalan's returning to form. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah, so much for that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs>